What's going on everybody? Zach from thebarbellphysio.com and today we're going to talk about a few tips to improve your overhead squat. So the overhead squat gives lots of athletes a lot of difficulty because of the extreme mobility, coordination, and strength demands of the movement and we want to talk about improving your positioning and the first thing that we really have to understand with the overhead squat is the importance of the angle of your torso relative to the ground. Let me show you what I mean here. So for a lot of individuals, when they descend down into a squat, their torso may drop forward. So their chest goes from pointing straight in front of them to pointing more towards the ground. Now that isn't an issue if we're talking about a back squat with a bar on our back, but we go, when we go into an overhead squat, that forward torso positioning really challenges our shoulder positioning. So if I maintain the shoulder angle and stand up, you can see that's a really extreme shoulder position. What we ideally want to see is a more upright shoulder position upright torso position with our shoulder stacked more over our body. When that torso is more upright, when we're in a more stacked position, that's gonna allow us to stabilize significantly more weight overhead. So we wanna see that good upright torso positioning. And there are a couple of things that we need to understand in order to get into that proper positioning. And the first thing that I typically do when I see somebody not having a great torso angle is try to adjust their stance because very frequently individuals are stuck with a straight toes forward squat or they're too narrow, too wide, they're not toed in or out enough. I play with those different variables and see if we find a setup that allows them to stay more upright in the bottom positioning of their squat. After a minute or two of that, I'm then gonna move on to testing mobility, specifically their ankle mobility. And let me show you why. So if an individual doesn't have the ability to drive their knees forward, and instead their knees are stuck back because of poor ankle mobility, you can see how that creates this torso angle that is more forward when the knees can't translate forward. So we really need to have dialed in great ankle mobility for the overhead squat. So here's how we're gonna test it. We're gonna drop down into the bottom of a lunge and I'm gonna get my big toe one hand width away from a wall or a box. And I'm gonna see, can I keep my heel flat on the ground and push my knees straight forward and touch my knee to the wall. If I can do that, then ankle mobility is not an issue. If we can't do that, then it might be something that we need to address. Below in the YouTube description, I'll share an article with you on the best ankle mobility exercises that I have found to improve somebody's positioning there. I do think it's also important to note that a lot of individuals will pass this test, but when you watch them squat, they squat like they don't have good hip mobility. Maybe they've over cued themselves to sit back in the squat, so sometimes, you have to work on their ability to feel that forward knee to actually use the ankle mobility that they have. We'll talk about a few more mobility tests here in a minute, but the setup and ankle mobility are the first two things I typically look at when I'm trying to improve somebody's overhead squat. From there, we can talk about their grip on the bar. So there are a number of different ways you'll hear individuals talk about um, finding grip width. I typically flex my hip up to 90 degrees and then put a PVC pipe there, and then with straight arms, grab the PVC pipe there. And that's typically going to be the grip width that allows me to do a couple things. Uh, number one, it allows me to get a, a good overhead position, but it also allows me to do a full pass through. So that if something happened and I had to bail, I could very easily drop the bar behind me without risking um, getting in a situation where my shoulder can't move into that position and the weights are forcing me there. But then we can play with that setup just a little bit. So for individuals, that are a little bit more mobile, typically narrowing that grip width a little bit will then allow them to have a little bit more strength and stability overhead. For individuals that are a little stiffer in their shoulders, going a little bit wider will allow them to have more motion. Now, the tricky part with this is most of us overhead squat to improve our snatch. So we may not wanna vary that too much because if we go a little bit more in than this test recommends, then the bar sitting right on my pubic bone and smashing a snatch on your pubic bone is not going to feel really good. We also have to discuss with our overhead squat an active shoulder position. So too many individuals when they're holding a bar overhead are just letting that bar push their shoulders down and they're not actively pressing up into the bar. I'm not suggesting that we shrug our shoulders and close down this angle. I'm just saying, imagine there's a pile of bricks on top of the barbell, press into that pile of bricks, give me a good, strong, active shoulder. That will allow us to stabilize more weight. A lot of individuals argue about externally rotating versus internally rotating the shoulder in the overhead squat. I think we're arguing 
about uh, a lot of nothing. If you actually look at the position of Chinese lifters and American lifters, you're gonna see that there's actually not that much variation in their actual shoulder positioning. The key for me is that as they descend into the squat, I'm not seeing that shoulder position change. I'm not seeing rotation through the shoulder. I'm seeing it stay in the same position the entire time. A lot of times when I see that rotation change, then I'm thinking that there is a mobility limitation. It's not always that way, but a lot of times it is. And typically that's gonna happen in the lats or the thoracic spine. So let's talk about how to test those two areas next. So first we'll talk about testing the thoracic spine. So I'm gonna get down here on my hands and knees. I'm gonna sit my butt onto my heels with my body right up against a wall or a box. My forearms go together right in front of my knees. I'm gonna take one hand and put it behind my low back. And then I wanna see if I can rotate and open my body up to where if you drew a line across my clavicles, my collarbone, that I create about a 50 degree angle relative to the ground. That's a great way to test your thoracic spine mobility specific to what we need for the overhead squat. We also wanna test the lats. So what I'll do to test lat flexibility is I'll get flat on a wall, not against a box, because I want a full wall behind me, and I'll sit with my legs crossed, my back is completely flat on the wall, and I'm gonna grab a PVC pipe with about a shoulder width grip, palms down, and I wanna see can I fully open my arms up to where my forearms make contact with the wall. If so, we're gonna actually reverse that and test with palms up. And so by going hips flexed, back flat, palms up, we're really testing the flexibility of the lat muscles. If the lats are tight as an individual descends down into a squat, a lot of times we're gonna see that shoulder rotate and kind of dump forward a little bit to take a little stress off of the lats. So those are three mobility areas to test, the ankles, the thoracic spine, and the lats that very commonly will impact your overhead squat. The final drill or thing I'd like to show with the overhead squat is a sit squat because I feel like this drill does a fantastic job of teaching individuals to maintain tension throughout the overhead squat. So the way I do this is I'll get an individual sitting on a ball or a chair or a low box. They'll grab a PVC pipe with their overhead squat grip. They'll get set up like they're in the bottom of a squat. And I'll say, imagine there's a scale under your butt. Make that scale say 50% of your weight. So they'll kind of unload that scale a little bit, then lift up about one inch, then go back down to 50% back up to one inch, 50%, one inch, and we'll repeat that. And doing that little subtle movement and holding that bottom position does a lot of good for increasing somebody's stiffness and stability down in the bottom of the overhead squat where things are most challenging. And I see that drill regularly help individuals clean up their overhead squat really fast. Just adjust the surface that you're working on to be that of what you need. So if you can only squat down to right here right now, then that's fine to surface that you can do that from there. And then over time, we'll lower that surface down lower and lower. So hope those things help you out in improving your overhead squat. Check out thebarbellphysio.com for more articles to improve your overhead squat, your mobility, your strength, your performance, and to reach your fitness goals.